My reading month in July was pretty, July, what? July? My reading month in July, this is January. Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. I am Julissa, this is Bounded and Bookmarked. And today's video is a wrap up for January. And let me tell you something, first of all. <laughs> I'm actually really freaking proud of not just the number of books I've read. I mean, of course, that's like, whatever. I've read a pretty good amount considering what I usually read in a month. But I have some really interesting reads on this list. Half of them I loved, the other half I didn't love. So I'm going to start with the ones I didn't love first because I have, I wanna get those negative thoughts out, you know, first and then end on a good note. So um, before I get into this video, of course, don't forget to hit subscribe if you feel like it. Don't forget to also follow me on Twitter or Instagram if you feel so inclined to do so. And uh, let's get the show on the road, shall we? I read Clockwork Princess this month at the very, very beginning and I finished it. I don't really want to go into a synopsis because it's the last book in the trilogy, but it does follow Tessa and Jem and Will and this villain, his name is the Magister, and the Magister wants to pretty much decimate all shadow hunters by using these things called Autobatons, which are just robots. And of course, in this book, there's also a love triangle that I didn't like. So I struggled with rating this book because I can't tell, even still, I can't tell if it's a 3.5 or if it's four stars for me because I didn't feel like it was four stars until the very, very end, like the epilogue. So I do wanna say that I feel like the world building in this book improved greatly from books one and two. And I also feel like um, the, the conflict got better because I feel like in the first two books, Nothing really happened. The villain was like, mm, oh my gosh, like not that scary to me, not that villainy to me. I do feel like in this one, he became a little more villainous, you know, he had those qualities that we like to see in villains. The thing that really bumped this down from being a true four stars is the fact that number one, the love triangle, I didn't like. Even though it's still different than most love triangles that I've read about, this particular one, the reason I didn't like it is because of Tessa, the main character. I feel like she definitely pulled along both of the guys. And I don't feel like they deserve that because they were both pretty decent people. I know Will isn't perfect, so I didn't really care about that that much. And then Tessa's character made this book very unenjoyable. Well, not book. This whole trilogy unenjoyable because I feel like from books one, two, and to three, and as her being the main character, I was expecting her to have this, you know, a good wrap up in her book, but I don't feel like she really shined like she should have. So I'm going to kind of tackle these books together because I read them back to back. We're gonna tackle City of Bones, City of Ashes, and City of Glass together. Let's start with City of Bones because it's the Moral Instruments first book. City of Bones, like the movie, this book follows Clary who very soon and very quickly finds out about the Shadowhunters world and she found out that Shadowhunters are people who kill demons and sometimes that also includes vampires and werewolves and fae and those three creatures all make up the down world. And in this first book, Clary witnesses a murder that has been made by the tattooed Shadowhunters who she will soon come to know people like Jace and Izzy and Alec. You also have a romance budding in this book between one of the shadow hunters, Jace and Clary. Okay, so just to let you guys know, I'm about to do a spoiler for the Mortal Instruments series. Now, I think the spoiler that everyone should know because it's definitely content warning for incest, well, fake incest in this case, but I think that you guys should listen to it. If you don't want to be spoiled, I totally get it. And I will have the timestamp in the bottom of the description box below for when you should skip to. Okay, back to regular programming. Who we find out are siblings. Now, this is not gonna be a spoilery thing, but I have some things to talk about with this series. First book, three stars. I like City of Bones mostly because I've seen the movie already and I love the movie. It's like a guilty pleasure of mine. So as I was reading the book, I felt like I was watching the movie and I kind of put like the actors and actresses faces with this book. So it was definitely more enjoyable in that sense. The ending I don't like because of the whole brother and sister reveal, not a fan. I hated this book, City of Ashes. I don't like a single thing about it. And I gave this book two stars. The second book, I would tell you what it's about. I don't even freaking know. I'm kidding, I do know. This book pretty much follows a villain who was Valentine, that's his name. And Valentine is actually Clary and Jace's father. And their father wants to eradicate all the shadow hunters. And by doing so, he needs to kill downworlders and he needs a child from each each species. So for example, he needs a child from the Fae, a child from the werewolves and a vampire child. And with the blood from these different children, he has to use that to complete a blood ritual, which will help him in getting rid of all the shadow hunters. Okay, so I will say the villain in these stories, much, much more enjoyable. I feel like he actually is kind of evil. The only redeeming part about the whole story was Valentine the villain, that's it. And now I'm about to rant because I'm really mad about this story. Um, as I was reading this book, I tried really hard to like it. I tried really hard to get into it. I couldn't. And the only reason why I'm still reading these series, this series is because my friends have all assured me that the last 
three books in this in this series get better and I've already started the fourth book so I can attest to that being true here's some of my rants and this is where I need to just talk about this because I feel like I'm sure I'm late to the party here I know people have already probably discussed this on booktube many freaking years ago but I'm new here so this is a YA series right and I think there's a difference between taboo writing and problematic writing this book is really writing a fine line because it definitely has a whole fake incest thing going on that trope if that's even a trope i don't even know i want to ask cassie claire like why did you think that that was okay to publish in a ya series i feel like adult series it's like you're an adult you're old enough to make whatever choice you want to make with your reading if that's what you're into i'm not gonna really judge you but to each their own as an adult so this being in a ya story is really unsettling because if, if i was a parent i wouldn't want my kid reading this because that's not appropriate behavior with your sibling there are scenes in this book where cassie wrote adult characters basically telling these two characters to kiss like what i hate this book so much um i'm only giving it two stars because her writing is, is actually good um i think her role building is pretty good i like the way she bounces into perspectives with characters she does it really well whatever it's the way <clears throat> that i don't mind spoiling that for somebody who hasn't read the series yet because i feel like you should know this so we're gonna move on to city of glass in city of glass the whole gang is in this book and we follow them to idris idris is the original home of all the shadow hunters and in this place valentine is once again trying to get the rest of the blood that he needs to finish his little blood ritual we get to see some really cool things happen in this book um i like the downworlders i actually prefer the downworlders to the shadow hunters which is really weird at least right now and i think that they're interesting characters so i can't wait to see them grow in the story some more but we get to see shadow hunters and downworlders who are usually enemies actually come together and work together against valentine which is nice I, I think that part was probably the highlight of the whole book for me in this third book the whole fake incest thing gets cleared up so i'm really glad about that i want to ask cass is there something that you want to tell us so so definitely a low four star book for me now that we've gotten my rants out of the way <laughs> it's my first five star read of the year now that i'm thinking about it and rightfully so this book will definitely hold the title of my favorite book of 2021 i don't care what else comes out this year and that book is amari and the night brothers by bb austin <sighs> this book was beautiful it was the epitome of black girl magic the epitome of just adventure and this is middle grade and i loved it it's a fantasy and it was so perfect this book follows amari who's a young 12 year old girl whose brother quentin has gone missing and so one day amari gets this briefcase delivered to her front door by this man and in this briefcase it's for her eyes only and when she opens it it's an invitation to try out for the bureau of supernatural affairs um and at this bureau kids from all over the world go there but these are all kids who have known about the supernatural world for their entire lives so they already have a leg up on amari and when the kids go there they to enhance their supernatural abilities and so amari finds out that her ability is actually illegal and so amari finds out that this is where her brother went to school at and she has to be successful here so that she can find answers as to where her brother is at See, this book is my baby seriously i'm gonna tell everyone to read it because it doesn't showcase black struggle i mean it has it has some real moments in there but it shows amari coming into herself as a 12 year old girl going against the grain and doing something that's kind of scary but also because she knows she has to do it to find her brother even though people around her look at her one way and they judge her and they're mean to her she still fights every day for what she believes in she fights every day for her brother and she does not let anyone get in her way of that and i love that message i think it's so beautiful the other characters in this book are written so perfect because we have plethora of characters who just all play a big and important part in the story and they all have different personalities which i love this is a true adventurous book i've read plenty of stories heck i just read the shadow hunters and the shadow hunters is definitely adventurous but this was an adventure of a lifetime it was a it took me to a place that i just did not get go to in books and i love that feeling because i've only had a few books in my life make me feel that way bb Olsen did an amazing job with this book i do have a reading vlog for this if you want to watch it you can see my real live reactions to it my sentimental heartfelt thoughts at the very end because i can go on and on about this book so just know that i loved it and i think that you should read it next is another very emotional book that i feel like i was not expecting to feel the way i felt about it and that is clap when you land by elizabeth acevedo it's written in verse this book follows two girls camino and yahida and these two girls are actually sisters however the two of them do not know that they both exist in this world at all whatsoever their biological father unfortunately dies in a plane accident and they end up meeting each other because of this accident and the beautiful thing about this book that i love is that first of all we have two people who have no clue 
that the other exists. So can you imagine meeting somebody across the world, well, one who lives in New York and the other one who lives in the Dominican Republic, living two different lives, and this is your sister or your sibling. You're upset because you wish your father told you the truth, but you're also grateful that you have a sister somewhere in the world when you feel like you've been alone for most of your life. And that's how these girls feel. This book doesn't just cover familial values. It covers so many other things. Um, one of my favorite things about this book though is how it shows how family can still be a lifesaver even if you barely know them. Um, how family in the end can really be everything. I personally love books written in verse because number one, when you hear it, I, wrote, I listened to it as an audiobook while I read it and it almost was like attending a spoken word. The next book that I read, I actually listened to an audiobook and I also have a review for this book up on my channel so I will link it below in the description box but that is When You Look Like Us by Pamela Harris and this book was really good. I was not sure how I feel about it. Um, it follows this boy Jay whose sister Nicole has gone missing and everyone in the neighborhood, everyone that works for the police station, they all just assume that she she just ran off with her drug dealer boyfriend. So they don't take her disappearance serious at all. This book for me was a lot to read. It showcases how often when black and brown kids go missing in black and brown neighborhoods, people just don't care. They just assume that you went off somewhere or even, even if you didn't go off somewhere, they don't really care about you. It even shows how police officers who look like us sometimes forget that they look like us. They think that they're just the person in their uniform, but when you take it off, you're still brown or you're still black. And so for me, it was hard to read because number one, if you're a black or brown person you know how difficult it can be for people to take you seriously not just cops but people in life um and so i resonated with that feeling of feeling like i've been overlooked and not seen um and it's really sad and it's really hard sometimes to work through but i think that in this book jay did a great job of well the writer did a great job of writing jay as a character who pushes the limits and he doesn't let people just stop and settle in their comfortability he pushed the police officers to do their jobs he pushed his friends to help him and he pushed himself too to find out the truth about the sister's disappearance and it doesn't end terribly sad um there is a hate crime in this book so i will say that that be careful if you read this book there is a hate crime it's not written in detail so no worries there but it can be very triggering it can be very upsetting i was very upset when i read this part of the book i wasn't expecting it so i didn't know what's gonna happen but reading it it just brought up some emotions that i didn't like but they're real emotions so i didn't brush them off but i, I really did enjoy it you know um and it could be an emotional connection that i had to the book i'm not even sure i don't know how i would read if i read it with my own eyes i listened to it so that could influence how I felt about the book but either way I enjoyed it it was like a low four star but it was still four stars nonetheless and then last but most certainly not least is a book that I just finished the other day for my 24 hour readathon and I love Christina Forrest already anyway she wrote one of the best YA novels I've read in a long time but I have finally read her second book and that is Now That I Found You oh it was so cute so this book follows Evie and Milo and Evie is the granddaughter of a very famous actress Evie ends up going to stay with her grandmother for a while because um this very scandalous incident happened where Evie was recorded and this video was leaked of her mocking a director, a very famous director, and people were upset about that. And so she lost her acting gig that she had with that director and is just trying to basically rebuild her reputation in the Hollywood industry. So she goes to stay with her grandmother for a while. Um, while she's there, she meets Milo because he lives with her grandmother. And she thinks that Milo is like taking advantage of her grandma, like some kind of sugar mama or something situation. But really that's not at all what the case is. Milo is just helping her with everyday things. And they became really close and good friends. Evie's grandmother leaves town and she disappears. And so Evie's freaking out and she's gonna ask Milo to assist her in finding her grandma. The whole time though, Evie is trying to find herself again. And she's struggling on the inside with feeling like her grandmother abandoned her but also feeling as though her grandmother abandoned her at the worst time in her acting career because she's trying to rebuild her reputation in Hollywood so that she can continue to act um and so this book was nice we get to watch Evie kind of kind of find herself again because Evie's character can be very her character can be very obnoxious she does a lot of the time feel like everything's about her or because of her or in spite of her either way whatever's happening she thinks that she's at the center of the whole thing so even though people in real life don't like that kind of person that was the whole point of her character and she really had to learn how to trust again because after that video leaked she found out that it was from her friend and so she had to learn how to trust Milo and her grandma and herself and so we kind of watch her she's 18 years old very very young still and find her footing in this industry and try to make a stand as to who she is now the only reason why this book was not a five-star book for me the pacing of the romance y'all probably thinking please so what you don't like the pacing of the romance usually I do usually I'm okay with insta love I'm usually okay with quick romances but this is a very short book it's 314 pages so very very short this book takes place over I think like four days so even though they were not they were not in love and love in the book they definitely threw on the L word it didn't feel organic enough for me and usually I like it 
but I'm starting to realize after after not reading romance for a while, reading a romance that happens quickly, not a fan of. And I think part of that is because in fantasy, you tend to see so much happening in fantasy stories. They're fighting freaking wars out here. Like they're doing all these things. So love is happening, but it's very slow most of the time. So for me, reading a book that happens over four days and they're like, oh, I think I might love you. is like, whoa, hold on. Like you really know me, you know? Like what's my last name? Can you even spell it? The romance was cute though. So don't get me wrong. Romance was very cute. Milo's character, I loved. He was funny. He reminds me of so many guys that I just know personally. There was a moment in this book that I have to highlight because that part was everything for me There's a part in this book where she wakes up and she has her scarf still on her head because she has her hair wrapped up Which for those of you who know you know and she's like, oh my gosh I don't mind to see me like this as a black girl It can be a little embarrassing if, at the first couple times like you're just like I don't want nobody to see me like this But that's who we are and that's our life and I love the way that Christina highlighted in this book Like it's just not a big deal like you have you have to wrap your hair at night and it's cool And Milo knows that because he grew up in a black family. He knows that it was a very very simple thing but it was something that just was so cute and so nice to see in a story because I don't never ever read black stories where the girls are having to wrap up their hair and y'all know we have to do that so it was nice to see it in this book so my reading month for January was really successful I'm really glad with the things that I read and I hope that you guys didn't do this video that is the end of it I haven't done this in a while but I want to see what's up with y'all so if you got to the end of the video put a black heart since it is Black History Month and I will see y'all in my next video